Hey everyone, Guy here. You know, one of the most inspiring things I've seen over the past few years is that even with all of the uncertainty and doubt that we've been experiencing, there are still tons and tons of people out there who are willing to take a leap and start a business. And all of us at How I Built This, well, we wanted to find a way to help them do that. So we put together a pitch competition and we did a massive search for some of the most innovative startups in the country. And we found 10 incredible finalists, all of whom set out to start companies to help change the world. The prize for winning the competition was a $50,000 grant generously supported by GoDaddy. It was incredibly hard to choose a winner, but we finally did. And here is his story. I was looking for a job in diversity and inclusion. I found this job, so I went on LinkedIn. I was looking for people in my network that worked at this company. And I found myself looking specifically for black people. You know, it's not really a way for you to know what it's like to be black at a specific company. There's more to a job than what your title is and, you know, how much money and stuff you're making. It's really about are you growing and you can grow best in an environment that you feel included in. Working in corporate America, I'm probably always going to be one of the only black people in a room and I just kind of have to own it. I also kind of use that as motivation to be the very best that I can be because I have so many identities. I'm a woman, I'm a Nigerian, I'm black, I am an immigrant. Like there are so many identities that pertain to who I am and they all affect who I am and like my personalities or how I show up in a space. As the world shifts and more and more people that don't fit this kind of white male standard enter the workforce, it's gonna be more and more important for those people to make sure that they belong in the workplace. It's very difficult to kind of find that place of belonging if you can't learn from the stories of the people that have come before you. Chezzy is a diversity, equity, and inclusion software company. We make products to help people find belonging at the workplace. As a job seeker, you can go on and find out what it's like to be any combination of identities at a prospective company. For companies, we help them create a more inclusive environments by giving them a platform to manage their employee resource groups. Our mission is to help minorities find companies and careers that they love, gain insight into the minority experience by just like looking on our website and looking on our platform and filtering those stories for people who identify similarly to you. A lot of minorities don't necessarily have the social capital that their non-minority counterparts have. We wanted to create Chazzy to kind of level that playing field. For every other business function, for HR, for marketing, for sales, they have their own like dedicated products. That doesn't exist for DEI. The only reason these other products exist is because like people have faced the problems before and had like the resources to create products to solve them. That hasn't been the case in the past because there hasn't been a lot of money given to people like us that have faced these problems and wanted to start products and companies to solve them. This is new for both of us. Like we're first time founders. We don't really know how to get to that next step or to get to where we need to be. We're just taking it kind of one step at a time. You know, we are our own users. It's like what we used to say is that like, we have worked in corporate America. We've dealt with microaggressions. We've dealt with some of the good stuff too, but we've also dealt with some of the negative. We know the experiences that we're like trying to fix. So that's our goal. We want people to, when they think about DEI, when they think about finding a job that values them, we want them to think Chesi. I was born in Lagos, Nigeria, but I grew up in Clemens, North Carolina. So my parents moved my sister and I over here. So I was four years old and she was two years old. Clemens, North Carolina is a suburb of Winston-Salem. It's a predominantly white town, but it's home. And I think, you know, it's always gonna have a place in the heart. There was a time when every year, the opportunity came for Nigerians to apply for the green card. It was called at the time, the visa lottery. It's like a one in a million chances and everybody at work was putting in, so I did. So that's how we settled here and we've been here ever since. I'm the oldest of four for a family size of six. My parents were very supportive, but at the same time, I think they very much expected excellence out of us. And that's how we move now. We expect excellence out of each other. In 2009, 2008, whenever the recession hit, my dad actually lost his job at RJ Reynolds here in Winston. So he kind of had no choice and he took a job in Nigeria. So we grew up primarily with mom at home, dad in Nigeria, but dad was always very present. Like even though he was, you know, miles away, he was always like, you know, as present as he could while being over there, which I think is so 
intentional in that like he wanted to be a part of our lives and he was he really was i just think that my parents were you know were immigrants so they were very much trying to figure out how to assimilate to this culture that they had come to that and brought their kids into but at the same time try and figure out what values to hold on to as nigerians we played a lot of basketball growing up and I feel like a lot of my community kind of came from my various teams. I played for the first time when I was eight, but I didn't start playing like seriously until seventh grade. My parents got me a hoop outside and I was out there every day. Through our sports and kind of like our extracurriculars, we were able to find and pave our own sense of community in Clemens. Toby went to the same high school as me. The teachers that taught him, they also taught me and they were like pushing us to be our very best. Being the first gen immigrants, I think our parents kind of used me as the guinea pig, especially when like sophomore, junior year came around and yeah. then it was like, okay, this, this college thing needs to start happening. UNC was the school. I went to a bunch of like their early identification programs for high school students. I walked around the campus, I met other students that were similar to me and interested in going to school then. I was like, that's where I want to go. That's the dream school. My senior year at North Carolina, I walked onto the team. I had been playing basketball since like, I was in seventh grade, and I wasn't totally sold on playing when I got to school, but I had been playing pickup, and a couple of the guys that were on the JV team or on a previous year's JV team were also playing. You know, I was keeping up with them or, or beating some of them, and I was kind of like, you know what, let's try out, let's give it a shot. So I trained and, and worked out and played all summer and got to campus that, that fall, and I still wasn't sure if I was going to be given a trial, but I tried to stay ready and keep playing pickup and working out and stuff, and then I got a text from Coach Davis saying, Coach Williams wants you to come try out. So I did. I worked out with the team for like six weeks. I think it was October 3rd. I was walking to practice, I was late, and Coach Williams stopped me and he was like, you know, you've been working really hard for us. Don't screw it up or we're gonna keep you for the rest of the year. I, and, you know, I got goosebumps. I'll never forget, I'll never ever forget that moment. I got goosebumps. The season was just, it was a dream. Unconsciously, I've taken a bunch of lessons from basketball and kind of pushed them into life now. I think like, you know, there's five people on a basketball court. If I guard my man and you guard your man and all five people on our team guard their individual person and do their job, there's no need for help side. And I've kind of taken that as like a life lesson, right? Like if I do my job and Demavi does her job, everyone else kind of takes care of what it is that they're supposed to take care of, what, they're th of the, what the responsibility is on the team will be good. That's definitely something I think about often is just doing your job, quote unquote, guarding the man in front of you. Our identities are like a combination of us being first gen, us being black, us growing up in the neighborhood that we did. You know, and Chesley's kind of built on this concept of a portrait, right? And then like someone's identity coming together and being able to find out what it's like to be a person of any combination of your identities at a prospective company. Companies spend a lot of time and money recruiting talent, right? They spend a lot of time and money putting benefits into their companies and trying to make it a place that people want to come work and stay working. But if you do all that and you don't think about diversity and inclusion and belonging, the talent that you're gonna end up missing out on is going to shape your company and your culture into one that's like very much like monolithic. Even when we start to have conversations with companies with Chesdy, like I'm always looking at it from like an intersectional lens of like a lot of these companies, when they say like, we need more diversity, maybe they're talking about like women, but they're not necessarily talking about black women or they're not necessarily talking about LGBTQ plus women. Like they are, you know, usually talking about white women. So I'm like, we always have to come at these initiatives, especially when it comes to diversity and inclusion from an intersectional sectional lens and make sure that we're looking at our employees holistically and not just, you know, the easiest identity point to cater to. It feels really good to be working on something that I think that impacts people that look like me and other people from underrepresented communities as well. I cannot imagine working on a company and not feeling like an emotional connection to the to the problem. I think resilience is like everything when it comes to entrepreneurship because you're gonna hear no a lot. Like I can't tell you how many like programs or accelerators Toby and I have applied to, how many pitch competitions we've done where like we didn't win or you know they think it might be too early for us or you know whatever it may be. Like you're gonna hear no a lot and you just kind of have to have to have the mindset of like. They don't see the vision, but someone will. My sister and I created Chezzy to help people find belonging in the workplace. And we're going to be the duo that solves the problem. This message comes from NPR sponsor GoDaddy. Making a different future starts with you. GoDaddy helps you create, sell, and get found online so you can create change or build an empire. Start different at GoDaddy.com.